Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Phoenix Point. Uh, I think we're going to, rather than heading straight into the Pandoran Lair, I think we're going to just back off a little bit here. I want to let Pandoran Capture and Containment finish um, so that we can see what exactly it asks of us and we can see if it makes sense to uh, to attempt to go after it up here. So I think, do we have a, a scan running right now? We do, okay. When this finishes, I'd like to drop a scan, like, way up here at the top of the world somewhere. There's supposedly a Phoenix base in the Arctic. There's not a whole lot of Arctic up here to land in or anything, so I'm not sure where that could be exactly. We did search all the nodes that we found up here pretty dutifully. So I think what we want to do is um, just... We can fly around and explore a little bit. We can check for new recruitment. So that's just an assault. Well, the man on this one has a little star. I assume that means, yeah, he's an elite. And he's something we've never seen before. There's not a way for me to, like, look? No. Okay, well, he's expensive. That that alone is enough to suggest that he is worth the price. Catalonia. I don't know where Catalonia is. Did I not click this message and warp there? I thought that we did that last time. Okay, that worked. Attacking Force Points 11. The two invasions that we stopped last turn ha each had an attack score of 2, didn't they? 11 seems bad. This seems like not the number we want to see. Also, it looks like the... I, I, I'm assuming that this red-green circle is indicating the progress of the invasion. So, they're almost done already? Alright, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to finish going to this haven... And we're going to see how much progress is made during that time. Okay, it is filling with red. It's filling with red really rapidly, actually. Specialized Pandoran containment facilities have been designed and successfully tested, allowing us to safely keep Pandorans in a state of constant paralysis. This represents a step forward in our struggle to understand their biology. So a containment facility is available... And we can build the Nurazer, which is the thing we will use to stun them to put them in containment, presumably. In order to capture a Pandoran, you need to equip a Nurazer, move next to it, melee attack it until it is paralyzed. When the paralysis value is greater than the target's strength, which is a number that I don't know if we've seen on enemies, the enemy is paralyzed and will be captured at the end of the mission. Targets lose a paralysis point per turn, so do not let them recover. Disabling body parts decreases their strength, making them easier to capture. Okay. Well, let's uh, manufacture an eraser then. That seems like a smart thing to do. Uh, probably prioritize that pretty highly. And then I don't know if we're going to be able to get all the way back over here in time. That's progressing really quickly. Are we almost at that haven? All right, let's take on Jim Dirt Brennan. What is his deal? Wow, that's... that is intense. That is an intense appearance. What on earth are you, my friend? A priest with proficiency with viral weapons. Oh, well that's convenient. He has straight up mind control, uh, but an enemy with willpower... The cost of this is equal to the enemy's willpower, or will points, so some enemies we're just not going to be able to grab, like Sirens had 30 will points. He can induce panic, again requires an enemy with low will. Of course, he can uh, multi-class, is reckless and thief, and handgun proficiency. Mind sense seems good. I mean, like, mind control is really powerful. I don't know how often this is going to be the case, but remember, we can lower enemy will points by damaging them, so sometimes we could force even a high will enemy into being capturable. He seems like a powerful, uh, potentially powerful dude. Also, that hat, that hat is really potentially powerful. Let's go ahead and give him one of those viral weapons we found. You are really just going all the way into that aesthetic, huh? Screaming head. A priestly head mutation. Wait, does that mean it's not removable? That does mean... Okay, so that's what the green around it is. It's a mutation. And it also gives him an ability. Scream, reducing the will points of all enemy units. Okay, so that could help you get some, some of your psychic stuff off. Minus stealth. Seems pretty okay, though. Minus speed plus perception. Wow, he actually has really high perception. 
Also, we have 14 magazines of virus rifle ammo? That's... Huh. Huh. Well, we should try to make it back, right? Let's, like, let's see if we can. I don't want to just give up on them. No, that's moving way too fast. Are we even close? We are not even close. Okay. Several members of base personnel have been caught sleepwalking and drawing elliptical shapes on the walls in an overlapping, almost hypnotic pattern that induced feelings of anxiety in, uh, in onlookers. On waking, the individuals were confused but otherwise unaffected. All of them reported dreams of flight. Understood, he lied. So, we're not going to be able to get there. We may as well veer off. Oh, you know what I should be doing is I should be building a containment facility. So, maybe we just kill the training facility? I was a little uncertain about that anyway, and an extra research lab. Like, there's so much to research. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to not do this. Destroying the facility will decrease the amount of experience your soldiers gain while in the base. At least one training facility is required, so your soldiers gain experience. Wait, do I... Do I have another one? Okay, no, it must... When it says this, it means gain experience while in the base. It doesn't mean you have to have a training facility for people to be able to level up at all. Yeah, no, this is fine. Let's, let's undo that, and what does it take to build Alien Jail? Not very much, it turns out. This facility has 50 containment space. Large creatures will take more space. Space is shared across all facilities. Okay, that seems important. So I kind of want to hold off on the lair, but we could go do that nest pretty quickly, or real quickly probably, and at least reduce a little bit of the danger in this area. Alright, locate and eliminate hatching sentinels. Got it. We know how this works. One thing we do not know is if the Scarab will be able to fire on an inside map, or if it's just like maybe we'll have a very abbreviated firing range. Okay, you have ammo, you have plenty. You're also probably fine, but why not refill? Okay. Let's do it. The last one of these was not all that difficult, and we, this time, we even have an idea of what to expect going in. This should be, hopefully, pretty clean. It might be the case that these get harder as the game goes on, though. May well be the, may well be the case that the thing, the things we saw last time will not be exactly the same as the things we see this time. And we're certainly starting to see new, uh, new Pandorans already. The siren was a little bit terrifying. So if it turns out that the Scarab can't really f arc its shots properly in the interior map here, um, I think I'm confident that we can handle it anyway, but we could always just bail to the evac zone, right? Come back later with a group of six people who have bullet-based weaponry. Alright, is that a... Ha that's a hatching sentinel right there. Well, I suppose let's get to it then. We don't see any eggs nearby. Is the sharpshooter in position to shoot it right away? Yes. Yes, she is. Okay, that's nice. So we can actually do a double uh, a double quick shot if we want. Does it have a lot of armor? It has a fair amount of armor. We should probably start with the rockets. Okay, we're positioned very, au very awkwardly here. How about this? We'll start with this grenade. Okay, it looks like we have our full normal firing arc. Maybe. I'm not going to spend our, our double grenade ability, because that's way too expensive to use in situations that don't really require it. Alright, I took eight armor off of it. It is preparing. Jack just has the double tap from here. Yeah, in fact, I don't think we have to use the, uh, the sharpshooter at all, unless I want to. Do we want to level you up a little? It would take two shots. Now, you know what? I'm just going to do this without spending any will. Alright, one down. One assumes... No? Was that... Wait. Really? We didn't even have to take actions on... Okay. Well... So, Babe hit level cap. We didn't even actually have to take actions with everybody. We, we finished the thing in two characters. That... Didn't it say the threat level was medium? 
I guess maybe it's it's measuring all of the units that were spawned all across the map that we just then didn't encounter. But that was pretty weird. Pandoran Lair has been neutralized and abandoned. The rest of humanity breathes a sigh of relief. We did some of that stuff. Um, research. Oh, did we? I thought we had to destroy a lair to unlock the lair thing. Was it enough to destroy a nest? I guess so. Okay. Um, so what do we want to do now? Oh, we have a um, we have an area scan running. I did want to scan the Arctic again. Actually, there's a note up here that we haven't. Were we just given a bunch of information? Did I click through that screen too quickly and it was like, hey, everybody's telling you where there where there are nodes because they are happy with you. Uh, well, I guess we ought to check this out because we do still have that mission to find the Phoenix base in the Arctic, right? Yeah, I don't feel great about that. There's nothing we were going to be able to do about it, though. We got to get that second Manticore active. Okay, this was, in fact, the base. So... Okay, so this, this is just our base selector. Uh, yeah, let's repair these facilities. Let's get this place back online. And then, what else are we going to need up here? We should probably build a... We should probably build, at the very least, first things first, um, living quarters and a medical bay, so that if we have troops that we want to have resting up here, we can do that. Then, after that, I don't know. We'll, we'll think about it. Storage capacity is shared across all bases. Would seem to imply that we don't need a storage uh, thing here at all, especially if we're not close to our uh, item cap. How expensive is it? Eh, it's a little too expensive. Yeah, we'll just we'll just leave it like this for right now. That's good to have. And then I guess we can go and just do some more exploring. Or what is this? Which thing is this? This is the fourth initiation. Maybe we should go do that. Cause like, where are we at with um with the disciples? We're at forty nine percent. So if we do one more thing for them, we become allied and we get access to their tech. That feels like a thing we ought to do. All right, let's go make friends. Scan complete. I don't want to do an area scan from here. It seems like we've already got our uh, the knowledge of the nodes nearby. I don't know where we do want to do one. We'll figure it out later. Fort Rand is home to Dr. Ramon P. Jacoby, leader of the new Jericho Taxonomy Project. In addition to being a brilliant scientist, Dr. Jacoby also claims to have invented the term Pandoran as a descriptor for the creatures that threaten our world. Now before that, people just called them monsters or mutants or even aliens, he says. But that's really rather missing the point, isn't it? Anyway, Dr. Jacoby continues. That's not what I wanted to talk to you about. Actually, I want to make you an offer. You see, I have something. A book. But not just any book, a notebook written by Randolph Symes, one of the founders of the Phoenix Project. A great man, ahead of his time. I'm sure it would be invaluable to you, and I'm willing to trade for it. Well, you know, we do have plenty of tech. <laughs> we just rob him. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll take that trade. The notebook appears to be authentic, although the notes are written in the idiosyncratic shorthand Symes had developed for his personal diaries. Still, his unique perspective on the history and early findings of the Phoenix Project is always illuminating. I don't actually know what a hundred research means in terms of, like, reduction of time. Do I want to... I mean, we may as well grab this, too, and then we'll go do that thing. Ooh, hey, this place has a, uh, has a little star by the dude. That's definitely a thing we don't have yet. Uh, sorry, no. Explore. We'll go pick that guy up, too. Passing over a destroyed town, our operatives detected a weak light shining from the top of a building. It's possible that one or more survivors have turned the top floor into a shelter. Our operatives have found a survivor. Exhausted, but otherwise hale, the individual in question escaped the destruction of a nearby independent haven some time ago, and holed up here waiting for the creatures to move on. An experienced fighter that would like to join the Phoenix Project. Okay. Welcome aboard, random person. I'm going to do this now, because I'm a little... Actually, are we going to be able to recruit that guy? 
No, we are not. We are too short on materials. I'm a little concerned that we're going to do this and it's going to push New Jericho into war with us. So maybe let's um, let's sniff around that area a little bit. See if we can get a, uh, a supply cache. So I'd love to recruit this guy before doing this mission. Our team has landed at a place called Fort Taggart. The people here are sick. Our operatives believe that the locals have contracted a new strain of influenza, but panic is brewing as rumors about Pandora virus inf infections are spreading. We've made contact with Commander Brooks, who runs this haven on behalf of New Jericho. She is asking for our assistance in the form of medical supplies and expertise. Yeah, why would I refuse aid to sick people? How does that help anybody? Miranda Brooks is extremely grateful for the medical assistance that our operatives have provided. Our team believes that in a week or two, the population will recover from the outbreak and everything will be back to normal. You know, we could just trade materials, actually. We don't have to find a thing. Trade tech for... Yeah, I'll do, I'll do this. Or we could raid them. Because the uh, Sinedrian does want us to raid them. I don't... I feel, I'd feel pretty bad about that. So what, it was 696 that we had to get to? We have so much tech. Let's get above that, though. Alright, we've taken all of the all of the spares they had. Let's go hire this guy, and then we'll go do this mission and maybe end up at war with uh, New Jericho. Alright, what are you? Also, we gotta look at the other new guy. Uh, what was the name of the new recruit? The other new recruit? Gertrude Azevedo, so just a normal normal assault class, although rather oddly outfitted. Put a helmet on, you madman. I was kind of hoping that the helmet might cover his mustache. Oh, we should have a look at Bave, because Bave hit max level. Cover two action points for each enemy killed until the end of the turn. Well, yes, of course we're taking that, obviously. And then we should do this. I, I still... Kind of want to wait until we have unlocked other new classes to see if we can't combine in a way that's slightly more effective. I'm going to leave you like this for right now. Okay, I think it's time to go do this thing. I guess this is the like the moment where we're about to put Bave into battle, potentially against people who are like good at stuff and actually armed. Do I maybe want to... Oh, I got distracted. I went into that menu in the first place to see what the class of our new guy was. You are... A technician. Proficiency, proficiency with, I'm assuming, personal defense weapons, robotic arms, and turret deployment. Action use action point cost of med kits, stim packs, and robo-arm abilities is reduced. Take manual control of a turret or vehicle weapon and shoot at a target. That's interesting. Uh, new class, obviously... Ooh. Field Medic restores disabled body parts. That seems really useful. Also, you know, resourceful at that level. Turrets can be thrown and deployed for one action point, And finally, all allies gain temporary armor. Okay, this doesn't seem like an amazing class. We don't have any weapons you can actually wield, do we? Well, you have your auto turret. I wonder if this is an expendable thing. Like, when he uses this, is it destroyed? I don't know. We'll worry about it later. For right now, let's go get into some trouble. A group of new Jericho soldiers is occupying this site, which is considered sacred by the Disciples of Anu. The Blind Legate has tasked us to destroy them in the name of the Exalted. It's getting a little... A little potentially we're not the good guys in here. Uh, you know what? You probably have plenty of ammo, but why not do this? The cost is so minimal. And are the others also ready? Yeah, you're all set. You're not the next guy. There we go. You're also all set. Yeah, let's do this. I would really love to have our heavy equipped with a machine gun and the grenade launcher, you know, for versatility, but he'd have to gain about 10 points of strength before that would be feasible. It's probably only actually five, but we're still talking about an investment of, like, probably close to 40 skill points. That said, think of it. Think of the power. We could unequip his normal grenade. That would buy us a little bit of capacity, because what are the odds he's ever going to use a normal grenade again? 
I guess they do fire for a smaller number of uh, action points than the the grenade launcher does. So maybe I uh, I guess there's a situation where we, where we might use it. We do have that ability that makes the grenade launcher cheaper, but it costs so much will, so very very much will. All right, important things to remember about new Jericho soldiers. Uh, first of all, taking out arms, pretty good, but if they still have one arm, they could use a grenade. And secondly, return fire. Return fire is a thing, and we must be ready for that. Do we see any enemies at all? We have no... Oh, wait, wait. Yes, we do. Okay, that guy is solidly behind a tree, though. I think we're going to be hard-pressed to actually get a shot there. Oh, never mind. He's not as close to that tree as I thought he was. Uh, Sabine, probably she. Uh, well, I think probably we just want to take the double quick aim then, right? I bet we can get this with the tighter aiming reticle. <laughs> yeah, alerted. Quick aim one more time, and then this will probably give us two will points back, so we, we will have enough to double quick aim again if we wanted to. Yeah, plus two. Pretty good. Uh, Ally recovers one action point. I'm just trying to remember. Remember all of our stuff here. So, we don't really know what we want to do. Let's start with the um, the Scarab. I guess, actually, I should have known. The Scarab's not going to reveal anything new. We can already see <laughs> everybody started further forward than it did. I guess we'll just move Bave up to some cover. Like, what's... Is this the same? No, this is not the same big building that we've seen in many of them. This is actually kind of a cool space. It's got this upper balcony and stuff. There's some interesting tactical options in this temple. I guess we could come up here and take up a spot near the window. I, th I really think that's more of a sharpshooter thing. Bave still has to be pretty close to get his kills. So we'll just move up to here, see if we... Okay. We have indeed. What did I see and where did I see it? Okay. There's a sharpshooter in the building. Where did I have that? Because hmm. we could potentially uh, dash. Yeah, we could dash to a position where we could light that guy up, but a one one round of assault rifle fire isn't going to do it. Who do I think your visibility is on uh, the rest of us? It's probably very low, actually. Aside from aside from him, maybe we just take cover and pass the turn. It's a shame you don't actually have a gun. Yeah, I could just overwatch in the direction of the entrance. Like, how do I think you'd advance? If, if this is me, I move up along the pews, and then this way, trying to keep line of sight out the door the whole time, because you want to come out far away from the enemies, right? But I don't know what the AI does yet, so it might be smarter to just watch this way. I mean, if it... Here's the thing. If the sharpshooter tries to go around the long way, we're not they're not going to get to a place where we could overwatch them this turn anyway. So yeah, I'll keep my overwatch in this general direction. I will just move him over to a place where he's a little bit safer from sniper fire. And do nothing. It doesn't feel awesome, but I think it's right. I guess I should have checked to see if there's any universe where I could make this happen. Probably, yeah, there's too much building in the way. Uh, I do still probably want to roll you forward a little bit more. This might end with the sharpshooter shooting at the vehicle, but I think that's probably not a big deal. Okay, out that side of the building is also a sensible path. Time to wreck. And there is a space marine on the roof? Sorry, that's okay, it's a heavy. With a new Jericho missile launcher. So high priority, this one. And a Gauss machine gun. Yeah, let's um. Yeah, I have an idea. I have a crazy idea. Let's do this and see what dropping this guy through the <laughs> through the ceiling into the church does. I imagine fall damage is probably pretty severe. Okay. So just some absolutely terrible shooting on the part of the scar uh, Scarab, but the job got done either way. How are your legs, my friend? 
Okay, it looks like fall damage doesn't actually come off of any of the body parts. That's pretty weird. Okay, thing number one. Obviously, it is of tremendous importance to me that we shoot this sharpshooter. I cannot take the shot from here, ah, because this isn't full cover, so I can't do the step to the side thing. So we stand right there, and we just... pop him? Doesn't... you know, it lacks poetry, but I guess it'll get the job done. Maybe I want to stand back here. Well, if I stand back here, it, it looks like I'll have enough action points to step back into cover afterward, probably. Ready to fire. Yeah, it's good enough. I guess we, we ought to shoot right here, right? Make sure that the uh, circle is completely full of enemies. And then, no, I was wrong. That was not enough fractional action point to uh, step back into cover. That's a shame. All right, well, can you hit the shot from here? No, probably not. Yeah, that's fine. All right, step out to here and hit it. Let's see now. Curious if I could use the hole in the roof to land something in there, but that's going to be Babe's job. Okay, that fell a little short. So you do get back to cover, and then we got to find Babe a shot. Really, all the way up to here doesn't give me anything. I guess he has. Yeah. All right. Here's my concern. Dude has a lot of armor. I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to be able to just, like, run in there and, and gank him the way I would like. So... I have nine will points. I could double dash. Oh, we have a, we have a shot from here. All right, let's... It's so right there. Let's dash to that location. See what the shot looks like, at least. And then we have plenty of movement points. We have plenty of action points to move back out if it looks like this is a bad idea. Oh, it does look like a bad idea. I could do one shot and then run. I think that's where I'm at here. I'm trying to think. Is there a better... I mean, th this is probably the shot I gotta take because he's just not accurate enough for any other shot. And I spread the damage out too much. Well, I mean, I, I'm just going to shoot again and then uh, will dash out. Nope, no, 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 no. I'm not done with him. He needs to run. Dash is so good. What an extremely good ability. Okay, you have an action point left, and I suppose we had to spend it rolling up toward the church, since it looks like we may need to do some work in there. He might be able to get a rocket shot that lets him hit both of these two. And that makes me nervous. He's also in terrible shape and his will points are all massacred and... Oh. Jetpack heavy. Uh, could the camera maybe be where he's landing Here instead of where fireworks. he... Oh dear. Okay. Looks like his shot just went a little wide there. Is that the same guy or... No. <laughs> he shot the floor out from underneath his friend. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, another one. They're really uh they're really deep on on this particular strategy. Okay. Well, that was really embarrassing for them. What a terrible, uh, what a terrible way for things to go. Uh, my initial inclination is to use the rockets to do this thing. I think that makes sense. We can't, we still can't really fire through. Just like the angles, the angles a little awkward. And the thing is, we have other ways of of shooting those guys. This guy is in really good cover for the moment. We just have to fix that. The Scarab is, like, worth its weight in gold, though. It has been really, really good for us. It did, however, completely fail at its job there, so that's not fun.
And that guy's just standing in the open. So I could step up to here, blast that dude once. That's tough. I'd be able to get back behind cover, but like, I'm not leaving myself a lot of options as far as as far as escape. But this is going to give me the shot, right? All right, hold on. Let me let me see what I can do with you guys first. Do we have anything resembling a shot on any of these dudes from anywhere outside? Okay, if I get to there, I can pull something. We have got to start getting kills here, right? Oh, I should have had a shot, but then crouching happened. I'd like to shoot, please? Why can I not? Oh, right, because I have to press quick aim in order to, in order to have the shot available. Duh. That was part of the plan in my head, and then I forgot about it. it looks like I've just got him. That's a kill. I'm kind of surprised these dudes have the will points to keep fighting. So we've done some we've done some fine fine work here. All right, that makes me feel a lot better about this move. Ooh, no penetration at all, huh? Try to break his weaponry up a little bit. It looks like he lost his gun. He doesn't have anything in his hands. He could still run over and punch me in the in the face with his huge robot gauntlets. I mean, it says he still has it. But he sure doesn't seem to have it. I'm assuming the shotgun is not going to be better for armor penetration. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Wait for a second. Let's see if we can get a grenade in here. Ready. It's going to be a tough one. Loud and clear. It's not totally impossible because of how much of the building is destroyed, but... Let's see, I can drop one up there. Yeah, I need to, I need to make things blow up in here, right? This works on grenades. So I could do as much as three action points worth of movement to throw a normal grenade. Just like I was saying, I would probably never need to. Yeah, I don't really know. I don't really have a good move here. How about this? Can we get a grenade this far? Looks like I probably could if I popped the um, the boom thing. However, the trajectory is still bad. So I'd have to I'd have to move first either way. So I'm not going to get two grenades. So let me try moving up to here. We're going to have to spend an action point on movement no matter what we do. What does this look like in that case? It looks like I might be able to blow his cover up. Might be able to do some damage to him. I can actually fire into the church in a place, but it's not a useful place. Yeah, the, there's too much overhanging roof here still. It's hard to... Hard to figure out exactly where the, uh... Oh, it's not... I couldn't even fire into the church. It's just that there's a little bit of roof tile still hanging there. Okay, so I think I just want to hit this guy. There was a spot. I know there was. And we saw it earlier. Then again, what are the odds I'm actually... If it, if it's, if it needs to be that precise, what are the odds I'm going to be able to make it happen anyway, right? I think we might have to just let that guy be alive. As much as I don't love that plan. So let's go back to trying to make this about you making it to here and then using the boom thing to throw a normal grenade for one action point. Downside of this is obviously if I fail, it, like if I get over here and it turns out I can't do it, I don't really have a lot of other options. Guy's turn is just gone. And I don't think it's going to let me even look at the trajectory. Alright, let's go for it. We'll just be helpful. Right, I'm assuming yeah, I can't even... 
can't even look at the traje trajectory if I don't spend Boom Blast. Okay, having some trouble here. I unfortunately cannot tell him to step to the side, it looks like. I also can't tell if that's a whole action point or not. It might not be. Let's see now. Yeah, and in the position I'm in now, I don't I don't have anything. Throw it in here. <laughs> Show babe who's boss. Stepping in here is not actually gonna help. Yeah, I, I just I just don't get any benefit from that skill. Yeah, really looking at it, like, the angle was not... That was not going to work. Alright, I'm going to, um... I'm going to have to withdraw Babe, I think. We could do a very small amount of damage here. We could aim for the Fury 2. We'd have to hit it with all six shots, it looks like? That can't be right. It has 20 armor. We hit for 36 six times... Yeah, we, 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 we would actually have to hit it with all six shots, which, given this targeting reticle, we won't. So I guess the only thing I can do is run. I just need to be somewhere else. Apparently these are not positions that have cover. Heading out. You need to get away from her as best as possible. I mean, I could run in here and take cover there and just try to make it awkward for him to... You are the guy who has the most ammo. So, I think it makes the most sense for you to be forward. You could end up... Nowhere, really. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that it helps to move you. Okay, this was not ideal. This is kind of a sloppily played turn. Time to see what they make of it. He's got his rocket. That hit her. Disabled arm, disabled head, equipment damaged but not destroyed. Okay. Alright. Bad, but not, um, bad, but not, like, critical. So, let's talk about options. Uh, this guy, we can't see him anymore. That's a problem. Keep it together, operative. So your arm is busted. Your handgun probably can't actually deal damage to that dude. I'm oh, no, actually. Actually, that's not bad at all. Alright, so if we use you, like close up a little bit and then take three handgun shots, use you to put down that enemy, then that frees up everybody else to figure out how to get to that other dude. Still have one functional arm. I think we're going to get there. I think we're just barely going to get there. Ugh. Nope. Okay. Well, uh, want to run over there and crack her across the head with your grenade launcher? We know approximately where the enemy is. I'm just a little, a little worried about approximately, you know? I guess this isn't that hard of a shot, and if, if the enemy's anywhere near here, this is gonna work. So I guess let's let's take the shot and see. Okay. I think that probably was good. What's left of this upper area? So I can run up here and have half cover. Probably be able to see pretty well into the building. Need to know what the status is of the other guy. Okay. So pretty badly injured. 47 health. 
Still, though, still more uh, more strength than I would like. Uh, we could go into our backpack and pull out a grenade. Inventory actions don't cost anything. For Bave, this is not a good situation for, honestly, either of the guns. But we don't have the action points to throw two grenades anyway, so it doesn't really help us to get a second grenade out. Ah, oh, you're killing me. Okay, we're going to have to run up to here then. I kind of wanted to avoid becoming actually visible to him. It's not even going to... It's hardly going to do any damage. Okay. How about this? How about we drop a grenade down here? Can't actually see what I'm doing. Yeah, we need to drop the grenade down here. Through the hole. And that'll give our heavy the ability to... Um, to push up and use... Not you. Yeah. Push up and use the grenade launcher, which we should be able to do, I think. And you're not going to bleed out in one turn. Okay, I think that's the move. I don't love it, but I think that's it. Wait, where's that? Boy, it's not a very wide spot, is it? That said, it's right next to me. This should work. This should be fine. Okay, plus two will points means I can run if I decide I need to not be right there anymore. Let's start with other people's actions. By which I mean your action. Apparently that's a full cover space? I guess there's still a thing there, kind of? I'm a little worried that I'm not going to be able to get the shot because of trying to arc it inside the building, but I guess the... I guess it's pretty tall. The space is pretty tall. I'm most worried about this doorway. We don't have the will points to do a dash. Okay, looks like the doorway is not going to be a problem. Except that I missed the grenade shot by a huge... What an incredible miss that was! All right, well, you can just sit here in return fire mode, but, like, that's not going to do anything. We don't know for sure whether he knows that it's not going to do anything. Am I close enough that I have to run because I would be in danger otherwise? Actually, I might be. We might be too, we might be close enough together that we present an attractive explosion target. So I just need to get to some place safe from which I can from which I can easily return next turn. I don't like this. That grenade launcher miss. The the amount that we've missed our explosive stuff has been uh, really heartbreaking. They're not having any better luck, fortunately. Okay, can we please try that again? That looks good. There we go. Yeah, it turns out heavies are uh, dangerous. Heavies are difficult opponents. Well, I hope the uh, I hope the disciples appreciate what we've done here for them today. Tiny ended up 3 XP short. I wonder how long it's going to be before Jericho declares open war on us and we have them attacking our, uh, our bases and stuff. I don't even think, like, there's not really anything we could say about the thing that happened here, right? Like, ah, uh, you know what, the, the disciples told us to go kill your guys, so we did. I can't you imagine that goes over well. your actions were necessary. Why the site is sacred. It is here that the conditions existed which brought forth a better body with a free mind. One without the other is meaningless. The Exalted bids us understand. Why here? To fathom why the site is sacred is to fathom how other sites may become sacred also. Keep on this path, and you shall hear the voice of the Shadowed Hierarch, and after him... The wisdom of the Synod of Yearning. Okay, 
free stuff I appreciate and we got a new recruit and we are now aligned so let's have a look at aligned fend havens against attack in order to continue improving reputation uh, and we have access to some of their research now the Tiamat merges mutated organic matter with technology to create a dirigible capable of transporting a squad over great distances though its speed is reduced by its sheer size so it sounds like it probably carries more people Basic equipment, the Anu religion. Disciples of Anu are a syncretic religion de dedicated to the pursuit of biological perfection. Strongly hierarchical. This is text we've read before. Okay, well. We gotta capture, okay, we gotta capture all the basic aliens. So that nest is, or that, that layer is not even uh, really necessary. Boy, we have a lot of stuff to research. Right now we're working on Pandoran evolution. I think we might... Put that on hold. Oh, these are instant. Okay, new items available for manufacturing. Their, their Iconoclast shotgun, some of their body armor. Yeah, I guess these don't have times listed on them, do they? While appearing to be a piece of technology, the Anu Dirigible is part machine and part living organism. Based on the design of a pre-plague airship, the Disciples of Anu have enhanced their version, making it more durable and efficient. The ship can sustain heavy damage while transporting a squad of eight soldiers. That's nice. Speed and maneuverability are lacking, though the craft makes up for it with storage capacity and range. I do like that idea a lot. Uh, and then, may as well research their religion. The Exalted teaches that the source of human suffering is that perfect human souls are trapped in imperfect human bodies. Humanity is insufficiently evolved and the flaws inherent in our current biology are the cause of the terrible things our history is so full of. The Pandora virus is both a form of divine punishment and an opportunity for the faithful to biologically improve themselves. These principles are set down in the Gospel of the Exalted, which also foretells the coming liturgy of the divine flesh, an eschatological event that the disciples must prepare for. It is important to note that the disciples do not worship the Pandorans or the Pandora virus, but see them as obstacles to be overcome on the road to biological perfection. Uh, yeah, so let me make Berserkers. So I, I assume we can now multi-class into Berserker if we want, and we've unlocked the ability to manufacture... Okay, so Marduk's Fist, Nurgle's Wrath, a 100 damage pistol. That's pretty cool. And then all of those fun Berserker clothes. According to the teachings of the Exalted, the Berserkers represent another step toward the perfection of the human body. Their enhanced combat abilities and greater tolerance for radical mutation are a manifestation of the soul of the warrior embodied in each of them. That which is best within them, a new pamphlet claims, the desire to fight and sacrifice for the greater good, has now been given biological expression. In keeping with Anu methods, the, re the rhetoric disguises significant advances in biotechnology and careful strategic planning. The Berserker soldier class was developed to counteract certain weaknesses in the Anu military, as perceived by Taxiarch Nurgle and the Blind Legate. But the technologies and training protocols involved will prove just as useful to us, we hope. Advanced melee weapons. So now we can make Dragon's Teeth and the Scion of Sharur. This just doesn't seem all that good, honestly. Like, I get the idea is, is some of it ignores armor, but the uh, Marduk's hand hits so hard. You'd have to be up against something that has a huge amount of armor for that to matter. This technology represents a first step towards mastering the mutation mechanics of the Pandora virus. Test subjects have been injected with modified strains of the infection under carefully controlled conditions, and with the addition of a chemical cocktail uh, intended to keep the virus from asserting control over the subject. The process is still experimental, and there may be some side effects, but the potential benefits to our soldiers are worth the risk. So an armored head that makes you immune to daze does lower your perception and your... Ooh, 15% accuracy. That's that's tough to swallow. Stomper legs, however, give plus 20. Uh, minus speed, minus stealth. Perform shock attack, affecting a five-tile radius. Yo, this seems like a weird technology. This is, this is pretty cool. Regenerate 10 hit points to all injured body parts. So... The minus accuracy on all the other body parts are clearly you're you're intended to equip them with stomper legs. I might just have some people mutate some stomper legs. 
Priest. Priest class, which we know all about. We've developed some new mutations, though. Radiant Hope. Instill Frenzy. That's a plus accuracy head. That one's that one's not. And the Psychic Scream, which we've already seen. Plus some basic body armor and the ability to build the uh, virus rifle. The Anu Priest, technically called the Hierius of the Prophet of the Dead God. Hierius of the Prophet of the Dead God, I guess? is supposed to be an extension of the will of the Exalted, guiding and protecting the people in her name. To this end, they have been granted sacred forms of mutation and various holy powers, such as the ability to control the minds of the weak and to manipulate the mist. However, underneath the religious terminology lies an ingenious combination of advanced tech and specialized training put together by the Exalted and her closest advisor, Taxiarch Nergal. We now have a complete understanding of the methods involved in training this class of soldier and can apply them as necessary. Also, fungal food production. The new method of producing food via the fungal fields increases output by 25%. That sounds all right. Uh, that's actually, that was plus eight food. A new breed of crops has been developed based on a highly modified version of the fungi used in the traditional Anu method of transubstantiating the bodies of the dead in the field of transubstantiation. Capable of thriving in nearly any conditions, the new fungal crops are capable of producing virus-free nutrition in large quantities. Hey, that sounds pretty alright. Okay, so that's all the stuff that we got from them. We can... Ooh, mutagen harvesting. So we would need this in order to do the mutations, I assume. We're going to have to spend mutagens in order to, like, I, can we even see, is there an indication anywhere of, of what we would have to do to mutate a soldier? Uh, maybe in the personnel thing? Like, could I decide the chief whitebeard needs to be mutated? Doesn't really look like it. So what's up, chief whitebeard? You are a level 2 priest, you have self-defense specialist, and eventually quarterback, and then close quarter specialist. Okay, that's interesting. I think that um, while the, the, like, the soldier's built-in proclivity system is a little bit simple, the fact that you can get weapon proficiency from it really does differentiate soldiers in a pretty major way. Uh, we also have the ability to manufacture a Tiamat, which I would like very much. We should build one of these, but uh, obviously... It's going to be a minute before we have the supplies to do that. Yeah, being able to run eight soldiers out to someplace seems like a really good idea. This makes me even more eager to uh, to make friends with Sinedrion. And I assume that if we lose our aligned status with, this, with the Disciples, we still keep our uh, all the stuff we learned from them. So probably we could let this slip, although it'd be, it would be nice to have feel like I have a coalition at my back, you know? I guess one way we can push Sinedrion is by clearing, uh, clearing that... Uh, that layer. So for right now, do we want to finish Pandoran Evolution or do we want to move on to something else? Something else weird that we've come up with. We don't really need mutagen harvesting until we actually have some captured Pandorans. Which is to say that it won't, it won't even be potentially useful until three days from now. But it does take more than three days to research it. This is probably just going to give us the bonus effect resources. We could use some materials, though. I'll let this finish. Maybe put that in the queue next, because that seems important. Okay. Uh, so what are we going to do now? We should definitely do at least one more thing here. Really? Symes Memorial Base. Soldiers 2. Oh, that's, yeah, that's our haven. I was, I was looking at that and thinking it was a haven. For some reason, my brain was like, that's, that's the new Jericho symbol. Wait, soldiers too? Who's here? Oh, it's just personnel at the base. It's not actually people? Or is there... This is a problem. These people are just at a symbol. I guess if all these guys are at Phoenix Point... Oh, no, okay. So yeah, you can't tell from the symbol where they are. I mean, it says here in the text, but it sure would be nice if you could add a glance it. Ah, well, we'll live. It is right there in text. I could just read, I suppose. I guess let's just scavenge a little bit. Uh, we should probably take these people home. Yeah, let's let's go home, change out our crew a little bit, and then we'll figure out what to do after that. Some of us need rest. Uh, personnel. 
Oh, Ponda's got to level up. I mean, Master Marksman is not a thing you even need to consider. It's such an obvious slam dunk. And we can now multi-class into other classes. So that's interesting. We probably do want to push some people out into Priest, right? Does Berserker have stuff that's actually good for anybody? Like, what is... Berserker has some weird stuff in it. Okay, you. You are what I want to look at. Armor Break seems useful. Close Quarters Evade is definitely good for assaults. Yeah, maybe this is what we could do with, um, with Bave. Make him part, uh, part Berserker. This is not a good way to scroll through people. I like that. And then, I don't know about Armor Break necessarily. Adrenaline Rush seems extremely good. Ignore Pain seems extremely good. So is it the case that Bave is never going to pick up personal skill points again? If so, it's absolutely worth cashing in some of these. I guess let's grab um, Close Quarters of Age. Let's grab Armor Break. Because with Armor Break, he would not have been in that position that he was in last time at all. And then... I also kind of want Close Quarters Evade. Might just grab everything. Damage and speed are increased proportional to health loss up to double. I wonder if that affects the damage from guns, because why would it? But then again, I mean, there's like actual sorcery in the game, so who knows. I'm going to take Adrenaline Rush. I'm going to grab Ignore Pain. Bave is too important to be getting disabled, and we'll think about this, or maybe I'll just get it now. I don't think I want to take Reckless. I'm His accuracy is, is fine. I don't want it to go down, though. Yeah, let's take this. We'll see if it's good. All right, thanks, Phoenix Point. So Bave C. Jack is now a total badass. A little bit of a madman, but a total badass. All right, who do we want to put on the thing to go exploring. We should probably start uh, we should probably try to level up one of the priests. So you have some SP already. Let's grab this. You don't really need handgun proficiency. You know what? I'm going to take it. And then we'll give you that and for some reason I'm not allowed to give you any of my pistols. Yeah, hey, this gives handgun proficiency. Why can you not take a pistol? Well, take one of these. Also, we need armor. Hold on. You don't. There's no armor that you can wear. So we have to manufacture you up some armor. Hold on. I'm gonna back out of the personnel screen and and come back in. I'm wondering if the pistols aren't appearing for him because he didn't have pistol proficiency at first, or wait, which base is he at? He's at Symes. But I mean, he has access to all of our magazines and stuff. So that probably shouldn't be... Oh wait, maybe if we toggle his filter off. Show me all of the stuff? Yeah, okay, he totally can use handguns, it just didn't want to show me the handguns. May as well take that. And then, armor. This is not your class specific armor, but it's what we have, so it's what you'll wear. 18 armor plus 3 speed versus 20 armor plus 1 speed. Doesn't seem like rocket science. Unfortunately, no uh, no headgear. We gotta build some helmets, it turns out. Alright, but you have an option that isn't your rifle in case you need to have an option that isn't your rifle. So let's put you on... Right, he's at Symes though, so he can't get on the ship. We can, we, we can go up there and grab him. But we're gonna we're gonna need to post like six people and one of the manticores up there, I guess. Or maybe we just leave it empty. That doesn't feel like a good idea. But maybe. All right. So people who are actually present. Uh, do we want to try to? I I can't really level you up. Crypto should get on the plane. Let's do that. Uh, do we want Magnus on the plane? Probably. And then we'll throw Lease in there with them, so they have one. They have one advanced and technically competent soldier. And then we just go out and like explore a little bit, just see if we can get into some trouble, some easy trouble. 
Uh, let's let's grab these cluster the the cluster of stuff down here. Interesting that find Phoenix Base Arctic is still an objective. We've definitely done that. Sharia is a friendly, culturally diverse haven which has taken in, uh, taken in many refugees over the last decade, though it remains somewhat isolationist when it comes to the bigger factions. Its founder is the thoughtful and charismatic Ulysses J. Black, the former owner of a global cybernetics company who was ousted after a hostile takeover by Vanadium Incorporated. Ah, uh, you better not trust West, that lion sack of Pandoran slime. Oh, Vanadium was West's company, that makes sense. Honestly, I don't think he even took my company away from me because of the actual cybernetics. It's all part of his great plan, I guess. Honestly, who gives a crap about his plan? Anyway, what I want from you people is this. Go to the Sinedrian Research Lab at these coordinates, retrieve the equipment on this list, and bring it all to me for a nice reward, no questions asked. You up for that? I'm not. I'm trying to get in Sinedrian's good graces. Unfortunate, but then I'm not sure I'd take such a mission from a stranger either. Still, had to try. No hard feelings. Okay, I appreciate that. What do you have here? Nothing of interest to us, it turns out. Uh, does everybody on the ship have, like, weapons and stuff? Are we actually ready to fight if it comes to it? You have a thing, you have something. You know what we should do, though, is uh, we should give him the stunner. If anybody's going to be the one to uh, to be able to equip it, or to be able to actually put it into use, it's him. So I do want to stick with the Marduk's Fist, right? 140 damage. I don't actually know what the shock does. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna try it like this. We'll see. Magnus has his deployable turrets, and we'll see if those are uh, consumables or not. Okay. Just wanted to be sure we'd be ready in case we run into something. All right, threat level low, daytime, let's do it. So the squad squad screen has eight maximum slots, and I had wondered about that before, but it's because there are vehicles that have eight slots. So we know we will never find a vehicle bigger than the blimp. Maybe faster. Maybe we, maybe we could find eight-person vehicles with better stats in other places, but that's as big as they get. Man, a scarab plus five soldiers seems like a terrifying force It'd be real tough for any of the enemies we've seen so far to deal with and again i suppose with more soldiers you're probably gonna get a little bit more clustering so maybe you know rocket launcher guys they would at least have an idea of what to do effective range is the range in tile positions at which the soldier can expect to hit a human-sized target 50 percent of the time that's interesting. I haven't even really been looking at the effective range stat, but I guess that's good information. It'll at least tell us how dangerous it is to get close to enemies. Okay. Kill all enemies. So where, where are all of our crates? There's a bunch of them against the back wall here. We have a nice tight cluster in this building. And then here and here we can see, I'm assuming, a mist sentinel? Yeah. So there's no crates that are super far away this time. Okay, I like this. We landed on the correct side of the battlefield here. At least can just hit the mist sentinel, like no question. Do I want to double quick shot it? It's not really a big danger. I think I'm just gonna shoot it and then creep forward. On the mark. If you can believe it, it has been alerted. I'm on the move. Hostile. Oh, I see another thing. Crabman looks like probably a launcher crabman. He doesn't have the big shield arm. Yep. Okay, well the good news is he's quite far away, and the other good news is he's almost certainly going to uh, going to go after the um, the resources. We can easily hit him with missiles, although we want to get a little bit closer to try to uh, try to lower the amount of sway that we're going to see. We also want to be real careful about the flammable gas here. 
I mean, if I put myself right here, am I just making it really attractive for him to drop a grenade on me? Maybe. Crypto's got to get close to do the things that Crypto wants to do, though. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't have brought this because we don't have the containment set up yet. That's why. And then it's going to cost you two action points to set up your turret. And you really don't move quickly. Really, really. All right. I'm going to move Crypto up a little bit. Saving. We'll come up to here. We'll see what this shot actually looks like. Yeah, this is part of the reason I wanted to move around, was I wanted to see if we were going to locate any more enemies. I mean, that's a pretty bad shot. Alright, let's do the let's do the missiles now. We're going to roll you over as close as possible. And can I get a double? Boy. Doesn't seem likely that that's going to land exactly where I want it to. Let's see what it gives us. Okay, just straight obliterate one is also fine. Obviously, it would have been cool to obliterate both of them, but... That might be too greedy of an ask. So that means Crypto's move changes a little bit. I guess I can just, like, yeah, I could run over here and take a pot shot at the thing in the distance. Okay, that guy's... That guy's a million yards away. Hey, what a surprise. I didn't hit it. I'm gonna step over here. Just out of fear of provoking explosions. Okay, so that thing's gonna spit out some mist, which is pretty whatever. To be perfectly honest with you, three launcher guys might be the whole enemy force, based on what we've seen on these missions so far. It's not. Okay, well, good news is that guy should be really easy to kill. Can I put this turret down in a spot that's gonna be a little bit better, though? Let's go. If I put it right here, it has a more open line of sight to many of the nearby enemies. It is created with no action points. Channel open. So we can't really wait on it. We should we should probably just run over here and, and dunk that mind fragger right now, right? I guess can I run up to it and hit it? Here's a question. Do I have a mischance in melee? Because if I do, this is a really bad idea. But if I don't, then I should definitely smash him. Okay, so we still have the normal bash, which I assume does bad damage. Can I get an indication? Yeah, that's not very much. Whereas this strike is going to be totally lethal, and it looks like maybe can't miss. Ooh. No indication that it could miss, so I'm going to hope that it can't. You just step back there. You, I think, are going to try to uh, resolve this tree situation. That's not okay. Okay, should be easy enough to clean up with the sharpshooter. All I need is a clear shot. Probably roll the vehicle over in that direction as well. Looking pretty good for us as far as resources that we're taking home. We could lose a crate and still come home with seven. Like, that feels pretty damn good. Is this guy just going to shoot the roof? Because he could, right? He just knock out what the, the crate is standing on. He's got pretty good cover from us, although there is a there is a slit in this wall. Ready for action. Okay, from right here, it looks like we'll have him. We'll have a shot, at least. Let's see what that actually looks like. Oh, you know, it just looks like it'll work, because she's amazing. Just shoot his tiny little head. That's probably the right thing to do. <coughs> I'm going to do a quick aim here, just to tighten the reticle up a little bit, because I really, really, really want to get the headshot. God, look at that. All right, that's minus eight will. I don't know if that's even going to matter, but... 
And then I do have... I can't... I can't shoot, but I can shoot, though, right? Like, I could try it. He's a pretty incredible shot. I'm going to go for it. Let's see if we can get him. Master Marksman and everything. Yep, still pretty likely to do more damage. We're not gonna we're not gonna be able to damage the carapace out, but it's just just stack 70 damage on top of his other problems. And then you Oh, looks like maybe the uh, the name generation algorithm not quite functional. You don't really get to do anything. Take this. Showed that barrel who's boss. Okay, firing takes all of your action points. I was kind of hoping that I was in a position where I could shoot through the barrel and it would hit that thing. Oh well. Uh, I don't really know what else there is for you to do. I kind of think you're get just going to stand by. Actually, if he stands over adjacent to... The, what do these actually do? Reload turret. Retrieve turret. So yeah, I can retrieve my turret. So I guess they probably don't get expended even if I don't, right? The There would be the assumption that you do uh, you do go get it back. I do feel a little dumb for having uh, <laughs> having damaged my phoenix by shooting at a barrel. I didn't realize the explosion was going to be quite that large. Be really careful as we approach here. I guess there's no opening on this side of the building. We're probably safe to like, really go for it. Let's do a partial though, just so, just to see if we see anything new. I'm pretty sure that guy's the only guy though. You can still run over here. I, I might stop where I'm at. Or maybe even um, go back inside a little bit. Don't take cover behind the red barrels. You've played video games before. You know better than that. This honestly is still maybe too close. I don't think I actually want to fire on the building with the vehicle. My concern is that I will damage the barrel. I might even not. Yeah, I don't think I don't even think I want to move. All right, so he's bleeding, not like super quickly. Oh, there's just a hole in the roof. I did not see that. Well, I bet we can get a sharpshooter thing going, but before we figure that out, I could run in here, but it would cost all of my action points. That's a shame. Can I get a decent shot with the handgun? It'd be really cool if we could give a kill to the Berserker. Shot one wide. Ah, that was close. Alright, we had a chance there. Now let's go get it done. She is probably not going to get the kill, actually. Looks like the pincer is not even going to take damage. Oh, I have the wrong weapon equipped. It's like, like, that's not the amount of damage I expect that shot to do. Here we go. And yet, something lives. Well, the turret can't overwatch. Moving out. Guess I'm just going to go retrieve it. Now we at least know what this class does. I don't think it really helps us to have a turret there. So, I, I don't know. Go here? I, we have to kill the Mist Sentinel. That's probably all it is. Uh, that's a thing we could let the Berserker do. How much health does it have? 150? Yeah, like a couple of handgun shots. Actually, can I rocket it without killing it? Yeah, let's do this. Let's soften it up a little. There we go. Make that not take quite so many turns. Oh no, it's pumping a bunch of mist into the same spaces that it already had pumped a bunch of mist into. No, actually, you know what? I think it did expand by one. Alright, got him. You got him. There we go, there's some XP for you. 
And we managed to save everything. That's probably going to be a pretty healthy supply, although it looked like a lot of the crates were tech. Which is not totally ideal. Yep, Lee's still pulling in the lion's share of the experience points because she's very good at her job. This might this might have been a case where, like, out here trying to do milk runs, it might have been worth leaving the scarab behind. It makes things so much easier and safer, though. Yeah, maybe before we do any more, we should go back, dump the scarab, bring in a bunch of people. What is this? A Fury 2 missile for that missile launcher that we saw. Yeah, just a bunch of different kinds of ammo. Crossbow quiver. Also a med kit. 400 supplies, though. That's what I'm really excited about. Uh, you know what? Yeah, maybe. I'll tell you what. This is probably a good time to stop and have a think. Maybe it's worth dropping off the scarab and bringing in more people just so we can get more XP. I'm not sure how the XP is divided over people. It might be the case that bringing in a bunch more people won't actually have people leveling up faster because it'll just be dividing everything evenly. But it seems like everybody gets a certain base amount. I don't know. I'll have a look at the footage and see if I can suss out whether it's even worth the return trip. But this is going to be where we're going to stop for today. Thank you all so much for watching. We've made tremendous strides in our class diversity and also uh, in some other things. And hopefully pretty soon we'll be in a place where I feel comfortable going to that lair. I mean, pretty much as soon as we have the, um, the containment technology. I think we'll give that a shot. So come back next time for some of the things I just said. I've already forgotten what I was talking about. And we'll see you then.